Well, somewhere out there on the riverbed, Big Boy Sports is here. And finally, I've been waiting to post this for quite some time. You know, uh, we got some lacrosse to talk about. A lot has happened since I last came back to you on the 21st with the lax scene. Let me tell you. Uh, wanted to wait until there was a good opportunity, a good day off for everything, you know, kind of marinate a little bit. Now that we're a little bit farther into the season, let me tell you, we, we, got, some, we got some good things going on. We got some good things going on, you know, some real good, some real, some real good, you know, real good things going on. And, you know, some real... Some real heavy hitters. Um, first things first, you know, the PLL Championship Series happened. Chrome won that. Um, did not really care for it. I tried. I thought I was going to make room for it. I ended up not watching that at all. I didn't watch the Championship Series final. Um, the first three weeks of the PLL season, by the way, um, those dates are fully locked in. So the first three weeks, the weekend, the uh, the first three weeks of June, those are locked in. Um, I believe it'll be a. I believe there will be a couple of. Let me let me check again real quick. Let me check again what I got for that real quick. But you know the PLL is locked in. First couple of weeks of the season locked in. You know, as far as I can tell, you know. So yeah, it'll be uh, that first Saturday and Sunday in June, then the Friday night and Saturday, the second Saturday and Friday night in June. So we're going to have some Friday night lax action and then another Friday, Saturday type deal, you know, on the 16th and the 17th of June. So, those first three weeks have been finalized in full. We know all the locations and everything, except the All-Star Game. I still don't know when that's going to be. The PLL went to Japan, had an exhibition game in Japan, did some fun things out there. Free agency has been wild so far. I know there's been some big trades and everything like that. You know, the champs, you know. You know, the, the Water Dogs, you know, they've been up to... Up to some good boy thing, let me tell you that much. I've been locking guys down. There was a couple of big trades. Uh, I believe, I think it was Will May that got traded. I think. I don't remember. But in any case, PLL in prime position to be in position. If you did, in fact, watch that game, the outdoor game, speaking of San Diego, the outdoor game at Snapdragon Stadium out in San Diego was a beautiful sight to behold. San Diego beat Las Vegas in that game. San Diego has one of the best records in the NLL right now. Along with teams like Buffalo. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be an interesting time, let me tell you that much, in the coming weeks as we wind down, you know, things. In fact... Colorado Buffalo will be a, the rematch of the NLL finals this Saturday night. It will be that Saturday night in which there will be a rematch between those two teams. You know, we're in the final few weeks of the NLL season before the postseason begins. And again, you know, San Diego. Toronto, keep an eye on Toronto as well. You know, out out west, Calgary is doing some good things. Um, it's gonna be fun. It'll be fun. Um, the West, you know, Panther City surprisingly has gotten a lot better. And out in the East, you know, it's still. Uh, yeah, don't forget about Rochester either, out there, in the East. But anybody else that can make a run at it. To make a run at it, you know, there's six teams over 500, and the other, and the other nine are not. So, 
Like, most teams are hovering at around five and six right now. So, you know, not everybody's played the same amount of games as of right now. Some teams have only played 11. Some teams have played 10. You know, some teams have played 13. So, we're still in the thick of things in the NL. The races are tight, definitely for the top seeds as well as the bottom rung um, that last three, four spots. Definitely going to be interesting. I'd say maybe the last two, two or three spots are going to definitely be intriguing in the NLL. Um, the PBLA, um, the Professional Box Lacrosse Association, that league actually kind of, I don't think anybody knew. And I was telling other people, like, hey, did y'all know that this league basically just went up and died? Like, it just ceased. It, it stopped playing. I don't know what happened really. I read an article about it basically that the PBLA just canceled their entire season and whatnot. And it's like, okay. Who cares? But yeah, going back to San Diego, but you know, who cares about PBLA? It was a league that, you know, no, nobody, not much fanfare was about it in the first place. And yet, it came and went. Um. Oh yeah. Speaking, of, I have to go back to saying, have to keep going, talk about San Diego again, real quick. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, the World Cross Men's, the Men's Tournament out in San Diego, late June. That first day in July. It's gonna be beautiful. The times were released for those. Everything is set. Kinda. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out uh, are the times at like Eastern time or are they like Pacific time? I don't. I don't know. It just says 7 p.m. for like the championship. Seven, like four, four or five o'clock for like the um, one of the semifinals. So I'm trying to figure out are these in Eastern time or are they in like Pacific time? I don't know. I don't know. Somebody's got to say something. Um, I know some of the rosters have been announced, like Hope Mashoni. The U.S. got their roster and everything like that. Well, some people were surprised. I think, I think somebody was. Uh, they got put on defense. I forgot who. Off the top of my head, so this is why I should probably make notes and make slides for for lax as well. And then let let's go to the college game. Definitely by far. The most interesting stuff has been happening as I've watched maybe like three or four NFL games all season. Whereas in college, you know, I've watched like 15, 20 so far. And in se in the season that we're getting right now, it's kind of it's kind of like the ACC is going back to the top where a lot of people think they are supposed to be. They're they're back. The ACC's back when the top. Three teams in the country are Virginia, North Carolina, and Duke right now, as it stands in the, in the polls. You know something. You know something is going on. There's there's another undefeated in Dartmouth, but I think you know that's gonna you know worry about itself. You know, as the Ivy League kind of didn't go, they didn't they didn't get very far. Um, in non-conference play, and then there's teams in the Big Ten that are surprising. Like, I think every team in the Big Ten is ranked. You know, Ohio State's kind of fallen off a little bit. They did not they did not perform well against Notre Dame or against Virginia. Uh, Michigan, they got into the poll by beating Harvard. And again, this is the same Michigan team that had a really good game against Virginia. And I'll talk a little bit more about Virginia in a second. Uh, Maryland's in, Johns Hopkins is in, uh, you know, Powell's Jersey retirement, that was a big thing, them and Syracuse, they got together, and they got a thriller out of it, and Syracuse, it's kind of a joke, uh, I don't know why Johns Hopkins is number 10 right now, but you know, it is what it is, I'm not going to say nothing about it, it's Johns Hopkins, I'm not going to say anything about it, they're number 10, that they're number 10, it's whatever. So really, it's just Syracuse that's kind of being the bottom feeder right now. But even then, Syracuse is a dangerous team. 
with me. Uh, and then going through the rest of the Big Ten, of course, Maryland, the defending champs, are still a dangerous bunch in and of themselves. And then Rutgers. Rutgers is also in kind of in a weird position because it's kind of hard to rate them right now. But uh, the Ivy League, you know, Penn State, of course, I, was the, um, I think I forgot about Penn State, but Penn State went through a clean sweep of three Ivy League teams, including beating Cornell. I watched that game definitely. Um, Paquette, definitely a really good goalie. Now, now to the to the big to the big thing. Um, Virginia, Notre Dame. That's the debate right now. Uh, of course, Duke is really really interesting as well, but they've been kind of slumping their way. But they're still a top three team. You know, it's kind of slumping their way into it, but it'll figure itself out, I think, with Duke. But really, the issue is between Notre Dame and Virginia right now. Notre Dame riding off that momentum from getting snubbed. In most people's eyes, you know, from the tournament last year, and Virginia, the preseason number one, pretty much, you know, unanimous number one since the start of the season, and they've continued to be number one. The debate is between them and Notre Dame, Virginia and Notre Dame. These two teams will face each other twice this year. Um, The problem for me, the, the problem for me uh, with Virginia is that they do not have a defense. They still don't. Well, when I said this a couple weeks ago that they don't have a defense, Notre Dame lights out the Kavanaugh brothers, you know, just other guys contributing on the, on the field and everything like that. I, I'm just not sold on Virginia's defense, and that's going to be the issue, I think, when these two teams match up on March 25th first. Because, um, I mean, you like it was a double-digit goals allowed to Towson of all teams. And I don't know what you're thinking. Oh, well, Towson's all right. No, it's Towson from the CAA. Ooh, come on. Does anybody really talk about the CAA? Aside from their bad media deals and everything like that, and how disorganized that conference is right now, not from a lacrosse standpoint, but from a you know other standpoint, nobody really talks about the CAA in lacrosse. You know, it's about the other, it's about the other major sports for them. So, you know, they've allowed double-digit goals. Virginia has in multiple games this year, and it's just not adding up. It's not adding up for me that they're the so-called best team in the country. It's just not adding up. I know, again, you got Schellenberger, you got so many other guys on that Virginia roster, loaded roster and everything like that. But at the end of the day, I think the number one team in the country, and I think the team that is most dangerous right now, the team that could win the national championship right now, is the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. I know. Insane for me to think that. But it, it might be true. With the way this Notre Dame team has been playing, you know, we're in for some interesting things. The Ivy League is still going to be very interesting as well because there's a lot of teams that are kind of clustered in there. I know, the, I know Penn and Princeton are kind of just hanging down with three losses down like towards the bottom of the top 20 right now. But we got to keep our eyes on Cornell still. We got to keep our eyes on Yale. That one's going to be fun. Uh, again, there's some there's some other intriguing matchups throughout the next couple weeks as as the college across scene tries to navigate through March Madness and how I'm gonna be able to get get some lax in while March Madness is still going on. It's gonna be it's gonna be an exciting time. Conference play for some teams have started already, and that means we're getting closer and closer to May. I know. It's the third week of March, and we're getting ever so close into May. So there's not a lot of time left for some teams. Some teams may be completely out of it already. Some teams may be in a position to be in position. But but in any case, 
he got we still got a long season to go in the college in the college game. We still got a long season to go. And until next time, I don't know when that will be. I imagine it'll be probably after March Madness and everything like that. So, you know, like in about three or four weeks or so, we'll come back at it one more time before, you know, getting in getting real deep into it with you know with May Madness and everything like that. And then, you know, the conference title races and everything, the uh the NLL playoffs kicking off, and then we're getting cl ever so close to June. Before you know it, before you know it, it will be June, and we'll be talking about the PLL. Before you know it, we'll be talking about you know, the PLL and everything like that. And, and y'all can stop with the Twitter debates, please, about the PLL versus the NLL. Please stop. I need y'all to stop immediately, please. There is no debate. We shouldn't be debating. What we should be debating is. Do we care about the Olympics enough to, you know, actually be trying to six this thing? Because I'm, I'm still kind of, I know some people hate it, but I'm just kind of like, okay. I, I, I could care less about the sixes. Like, like, I don't really care, but I could care. It's the Olympics that I don't care about at all. <laughs> that's, that's my question to y'all.